Uh, tonight, I, I want to look at one verse. Now, I've got some other verses. You know I've got some other verses. But the primary text, one verse, out of Romans, you can be finding that. We're going to be talking about one thing, one thing which is living at peace with all people. Living at peace with all people. You know, we had five kids. I understood the meaning of the expression, keep the peace. All right, when you got five kids, four of them were toddlers at the same time. Those same four obviously were teenagers at the same time. And keeping the peace wasn't always easy. Sometimes I'd come home from work after working all day long, and I'd come home and uh, Miss Diana would be just about ready to pull her hair out or somebody else's hair out, I don't know. And, and so, you know, the role of a parent, in many cases, no matter how many kids you've got, the role of a parent sometimes is to, is to keep the peace. And uh, I've watched uh, a lot of football. I don't watch a lot of sports. I don't have time. But I do watch uh, football as often as I get a chance. I've been watching some, some old uh, games uh, on DVD. It's, it's amazing to me how many times these grown men that earn lots of money, these multimillionaires in many cases, get out there and because something doesn't go the way they like it, they start beating up on each other. You know, you see these tiny little guys in these black and white suits, they get in there and they get right in the middle of it because they're peacekeepers. You see, and they get out there and it's a wonder any of them survived this. You know, keeping the peace with, at any given time, 22 grown, beefy people out there cannot be an easy task. You know, our military, and I have a great deal of respect for our military, and our military has been called upon on more than one occasion to be peacekeepers. And and I honor our soldiers that answer the call. Now, I know and you know, they've not always been able to keep the peace because sometimes people don't want peace. I mean, they welcome us with open arms, and when we get in there, we try to keep the peace, but it's, it's not always possible because sometimes people would rather fight. I mean, they're so used to it, they just want to fight. And so our military does what it can, but they cannot change the way people think. They can only try. Our, 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 our police and other law enforcement people do the very best they can. I really believe that. You know, I... I know that we can see a lot of stuff on the news, but they're not showing the majority of what I see. You know, the, on the Fort Smith police cars, and I think Green was the same, to, to protect and to serve. You know, and, and I, I believe that that is true of, of most of our law enforcement people. They've got to keep the peace. Now, that doesn't mean they walk around like some countries with machine guns strapped on and order you to do this and to do that, it means they look for opportunities to try to take a situation that's escalated and make it peaceful. That's not, yeah, that's tough. You know what else can be tough when it comes to keeping the peace? A church business meeting. I know what you're thinking. We just went through a business meeting and we had proposals and we had new members and we had all this kind of stuff. And by the way, it's great to have new members come and ask a question in a business meeting. You can't do that everywhere. Don't think you can do it all the time. No, I'm just kidding. I was at a business meeting in a church that we were members of. This is no lie. My wife, again, there are so many things that if it wasn't for Diana being here, uh, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff, but because I do have a witness, I was at a business meeting, and tempers started getting really riled. We had a bad situation in this church. I was sitting in the very back row. I was watching the, the, the goings-on. I had served in this church, and, and you know, I was not trying to get, uh, I was not trying to instigate nothing. I was just sitting there minding my own business and watching the proceedings. But my good friend, Billy, who had done many things in the church, good old, he's a, he was one of those what you call a good old boy. Anybody know what a good old boy is? He was a good old boy. But I, I really appreciate it. Billy was one of the first people and maybe the only person I ever saw put a chicken wing in his mouth and pull out the bone. You ever seen anybody do that? Boy, I tell you what. That's when you know you got something going on right there. But anyway, he got riled. 
And, and he, you know, he was probably right to be riled up to a point. But when he stood up and started towards the front of the room, this is no kidding. Now, Dinah, you were there. I got up and I come behind him with my arms underneath his arms. I say, Billy, we can't do this. And he drug me for about two or three feet. He's bigger than I was. But I said, Billy, we can't do this. He calmed down. You know, that's, that may be extreme. But my point is there are times when people want to fight. Nations, people on the street, even people in churches, there are times when people just want to fight. And, and the thing is, sometimes we can just feel like we need to fight. And I'm not saying that there isn't. Please hear me till I get to the end of this message, please. But what we really need is peace. I, I, I consult my good friend Webster. Webster and I go way back. And, and, and Webster defines peace, uh, first and foremost, as freedom, catch this now, freedom from war, freedom from public disturbance or disorder, freedom from disagreements or quarrels. So in other words, peace then is the absence of, of these bad things, okay? That's a condition. So when these bad things aren't happening, theoretically, you should have peace. By the way, it is really getting it done up there right now. Can you hear what I hear? And I know what you're thinking. I could be home right now. But he also says this, peace is harmony. Now, I'm not sure harmony is a condition. I believe harmony is a position. Harmony is where one entity and another entity are together on something. Whether it's two people, two nations, whatever, that's harmony. So we could say, uh, uh, under the right conditions, there can be peace in society. And with the right position, we can be at peace with people, harmony. Now, of course, the first and foremost thing that we should be concerned with is peace with God. I am grateful, I am really grateful that peace with God is not dependent upon Thurman Smith. You should be glad of that too, by the way. Fill in the blank. Peace with God is dependent on God saying, I love the world so much, I'm going to do something about this problem down there. Peace with God is Jesus Christ saying, this is not something I'm really looking forward to, but I'm going to do it because if I don't, mankind will never have peace with God. I'm thankful for that. See, that is a condition, and it's also a position. If you're not taking notes, shame on you. That's a good one. But as believers, I believe we have a peace mandate. Now, mandate is, is, is a word that we've come to dislike very much because we just got out of a year of a mask mandate. A, a mandate means somebody is telling you what you can and can't do. And I don't know about you, nobody... I, I, most of us didn't like having to wear a mask. I hope that most of us realized that there was a reason for it, and a good reason. And we did what we had to do. We're better off today than we were one year ago. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm talking about a peace mandate on you and I. In other words, it's not just hoping for peace. It's working for peace. It's not just seeking peace. It's living peaceful with other people. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. That's a tall order in middle America in the 21st century. In Romans chapter 12, verse 18, here's your peace mandate. Not me talking. 
Oh, I love to hear those pages. You know, <laughs> this is one of my advantages here. Usually when I'm preaching up here, somebody up there is quicker than I am and they got all the words on the screen. So tonight we don't got that. So you got to either look in the Bible or trust me. Romans 12, verse 18. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, Live peaceably with all men. I'm going to say it again, okay? This is God's Word talking, not Thurman. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, me, live peaceably with all men. Now, we cannot control everything in society. We can't control all the conditions. But we can control our own words and actions in such a way as to instill peace. And it's not always going to be easy. But let's break this down. There's really two clauses here. The first one is a compound clause, okay? How many grammar uh, majors do we have in the room? Any? Compound clause. If it is possible as much as it depends on you, if it is possible. Now, that implies it won't always be. Otherwise, the Word of God said, it is always possible, therefore. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, You know, why isn't it always possible? For one reason, because I can have very strong desires, very strong opinions. And normally, the human experience is, my opinions are always right. Sometimes people can just plain be belligerent, okay? It's not possible when somebody absolutely refuses the peace initiative. It's not. It's impossible. No matter how hard you try. There are some things in society that prevent peace, and they're outside of our control. So I'm not here to fix that tonight. I'm not here to give you a biblical mandate about those situations. What I'm saying, and what the Bible says, if it's possible, as much as depends on you. So, what is our peace mandate when peace seems to be not possible? First thing I think is, we need to find peace within. And by by saying that, what I mean is this. You know, I I want peace with you on this situation or or on or on this issue, and we're not getting anywhere, okay? We are we are at polar opposites and this kind of stuff, and I'm not getting anywhere. For me to be at peace, I have to examine myself. Are my wants and opinions selfish? Are they are they realistic? Are they fair? I need to find peace within first. You know, i got to do some soul searching. Am I picking a fight where there isn't a fight? Am I demanding my right when I have no right to demand it? That's another good one. Write that one down. I have to fight the temptation to give in to anger and fight back because that's a very strong emotion. Let's just face it. And again, I pick on us in middle America in the 21st century because we are unique. In some parts of the world, you don't dare argue. You don't dare fight back because if you do, someone will put a gun in your back and march you off to a gulag. I mean, those kind of things really do happen in other parts of the world. it's, It's almost as though our our freedom, which we value so much, and we should, and we fight for it. Sometimes we we almost think that that gives us license to get angry with people that don't agree with us. That's crazy. I I have to fight the temptation. I, I find peace within, check my own motives, 
fight the temptation to give in to anger and fight back, and I need to pray. When was the last time you stopped in the middle of a fight to pray? Lord, stop me from this silliness. Yeah, how many times you, you read about something in the paper, you hear it on the news, things got way out of control at a child's softball game. Uh, maybe your child or your grandchild can, can evoke some memories for you, okay? Maybe it wasn't you, but you was out there and you saw it, and you said, man, them people are really getting ugly. And they're saying things they would never say in church. I mean, you might even see church members, and they say, well, they would never say that in church. And then later on they'll say, well, I don't know what happened. I just, I just lost control. I didn't mean any of that stuff. Well, maybe instead of losing control, we ought to stop and pray about it. You know, I believe God can answer just about any prayer, and I believe God is honored when we say, Lord, I'm about ready to say something or do something really stupid. Would you stop me? Now, don't pray it if you don't want him to stop you. But it'll help. Check your motives, fight the temptation, pray hard, and as much as possible, listen to the Bible. Live at peace with all people. Live peaceably with all people, the second half of this verse. Now that to live peaceably, hear me, does not mean we retreat from all confrontation. That's not what it means at all. We cannot accept the unacceptable in the interest of peace. I say that, I say that as a nation, as a people, and as an individual. We cannot accept the unacceptable in the name of peace. We can't compromise our values. We can't hold back on legitimate rebuke when it's warranted. Well, we don't do church discipline these days, Thurman, you see, because we don't want to offend anybody. Now, this is not a message about church discipline, okay? You'll have to come back for another time. But I'm telling you, we don't, in the interest of peace, let's just, let's not, Thurman, we're, let's, we're just not going to go there. That, that is not what is meant by living peaceably with, with all people. There are times when you have to draw a line. I understand that. Uh, there is a way to draw a line without being, without being mean and, and violent. To live peaceably does mean that we accept the pack, fact. Listen, listen. We accept the fact that people's views even morals, listen to me, will not always be like ours. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to like it or agree with it, but we can still be at peace with others in most situations. You see, you can say, I have a different opinion. You can say, I have different beliefs. That's not the same thing as picking a fight. And I, again, you know, it, it offends us, and so what do we want to do? We want to fight. And the Bible says, if possible, as much as it depends on you, be at peace with other people. Uh, we let too many, I'm just going to say this, okay? You may, I'm, you may never see me on a Wednesday night again, I'm just going to tell you. We let way too many things drive a wedge between us in America today. Again, partly because we enjoy our freedom so much that we feel that it's our divine right to make sure that everybody else is lined up with us. You can do that here. Try to do that in Saudi Arabia, they'll kill you. Just saying, okay? I'm going to throw a few things out. And I just, I'm just going to let it ruminate a little bit, okay? Maybe everybody in here has probably said, well, I, I, I'm okay with this or that. You know, I'm, I don't have a real strong opinion about those matters like uh, political persuasion, the election, immigration, climate change, gun rights, 
language and cultural differences. How about this? Add this one to the list. COVID-19 protocols. We're always finding new things to fight about. Why do we do that? We can, we can, and we should leave, live peaceably with all people, even though they may have a different viewpoint than we do when it is possible. And I, I, I'll say this, I've been saying this for a million years. I'm not a million years old, but that's an exaggeration. This is still America. It is still the land of the free. People are entitled to have their own opinions. We don't have to agree with them. But to assume that if they don't agree with us, they are wrong, and I want to fight? That's not American. It's just not. Here's what I've said for many, many years. The very rights and privileges that we would withhold from one group of people today are the ones that will be withheld from us at some point in the future. And if you wouldn't like it, if somebody came and said, give me that Bible, I'm going to throw it on fire. Would you like that? I wouldn't like it either, and I wouldn't do it. I want you to know that, brother, okay? Don't get mad at me now. But that's what we want to do to other people. Whatever it is, we want to throw it on the fire. We want to fight about it. I don't want to fight. I'm just done with that. As much as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. I want to give you a few verses and we'll be done here. A few verses that address, I mean, there's plenty of verses that we could go to, but I want to, a couple of ways that we can, we can bring, breathe life into the, to this peace mandate, okay? Starting in James. Watch what you say. Oh boy, there he goes. I don't want to hear it, Thurman. Well, you're going to hear it anyway. Unless Lucas cuts my mic, then you won't hear it. In James 1, verse 19 and 20. James 1. I got several passages from James. James 1, 19 through 20 says this. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. Verse 26, same chapter, James 1, 26 says this, if anyone among you thinks he is religious. Now most Baptists believe that we're pretty religious, and that's okay. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is Useless, not my word, the word of God. You can have all the religion in the world. And you want to fight every time you turn around, your religion is worthless. James 3, verse 8. You know this one. You, 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 I know you do. No man can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, Listen, we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing, sometimes in the same discussion. My brethren, these things ought not be so. We've got to learn to watch what we say. Got to learn to control our anger in Ephesians chapter 4. This has been one of the verses I've had to remind Thurman of many, many times. Ephesians 4.26, be angry and do not sin. You see, you're going to get angry. God knows you're going to get angry. I know you're going to get angry, of course. That doesn't mean you have to sin, though. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Now, that's just good counsel from the Word of God. You want to stew on it, stew on it, but at some point you'd better come to peace. Or it will eat you up. 
Third thing is demonstrate Christ in your actions and words. Demonstrate Christ in your actions and words. In Matthew, this is the words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. Five, Matthew 5, 14, 16. I started to write all these down and hand them out to you, but I figured I didn't want to clean up all the pieces of paper after we left here. If you want the, the passages, I'll give them to you anytime you want, if I'm here. Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. You, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Now listen to the words of Jesus. Let your light so shine. You're the light of the world. He's already given us that. So let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Is that what they're seeing? I'm just saying we need to demonstrate Christ in our actions and words and flip with, over to uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Come on, Peter, where are you? I know you're in here. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Verse Peter 3, 15 says this, For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God. You see, we can demonstrate Christ in our actions. It's pretty hard to get up and fight with somebody when you're doing that. And the last thing takes us back to where we started. Seek a position of peace. You may not always be able to seek and find a condition of peace, the absence of this thing or that thing. But you can and I can as individuals every time we can seek a position of peace. Romans 12, starting with verse 16 now, okay? Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all men. Father, I thank you for your word and its challenge to my heart this past week. I pray of all people that we, as children of the King, as professing Christians, would be seeking peace with all people wherever it's possible. There'll be times where we are not able to break down the barrier. There'll be times when we cannot compromise. Short of that, Lord, help us to be salt and light in a darkened world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank, we thank you for joining us this evening at Rahil Baptist Church. And may God richly bless you.